Hi folks, John Cordisco back again from Cordisco's Chess Center in Binghamton, New York, in upstate New York. Uh, here with Game 3 of a tournament that I played in over the St. Patrick's Day weekend, the Eastern Class Championship in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. It was run by the Continental Chess Association. Uh, I was in the Class C, which is the 1400 to 1600 rated players. Uh, this is game three of a five game video series. Um, I'm white and I'm going to title this game Nowhere to Hide and you'll see why in a little bit. I went e4. My opponent went d6. I'm going to go through the first few moves here. It's a Pierce uh, defense. Some people call it the Pierk. Uh, Grandmaster Gregory Kadanov calls it, says it's properly pronounced the Pierce defense. So I'll take that he knows. A lot of people call it the perk, though. G5. I castled. He castled. I went queen to D2. Now what I'm looking at here is I'm, I'm giving it some thought. I'm considering moving my dark squared bishop to here to get rid of his dark squared bishop. What happens is when you feed and kettle a bishop like that, you leave the dark squares around your king vulnerable. Reason being that the G pawn has been moved up one. So the squares here and here are technically vulnerable, both of those squares. So I was going to try to get rid of his dark squared bishop. He went knight c6. I went bishop h6 right away with my plan. He went rook e8. I took the bishop, king takes, and then I went bishop to e2, because I was still debating on whether the castle on the king side or the queen side, uh, depending, if I castled on the king side, of course, I couldn't do a pawn storm, uh, basically be an opposite side castle attack, which is a lot more fun, because each side races to try to get the enemy king. He went e5, and I thought about this for a little bit. I figured, well, let's open up the center a little bit if he takes. So I castled long. Long side castling, he went queen e7. And now I closed up the d5. Reason for that is I want to keep the center closed because I'm going to start my attack on the king side. And if I leave the center closed, he has no counterplay in the center. He went knight to b8. You're going to see a lot of backwards moves in this game on, uh, with the knights, uh, me included. It's funny when you're when you're sitting there playing, and you have these ideas of a plan you wanted to do or some moves. They seemed to be so right for that time to you, and then you look at them later and you think to yourself, "What on earth was I thinking?" You know, it's funny when you're caught up in the moment of playing because you're in the zone. Uh, at least you hope you are in the zone when you're playing, and your total concentration is uh, on the game. But uh, you'll see a couple of moves that are a little questionable on both our parts. <laughs> the first questionable move is rook to f1 from the d-square. Now, what I was thinking, I was going to move my going to move my f knight here out of the way and then push the f pawn and start a storm on his king. Uh, a little premature. You'll see in a little bit. I changed my mind. He goes a6. He wants to start his pawn storm on my king. So I go h3. He goes b5. And I go bishop d3. I was trying to reinforce my e pawn. My pawn here because he's going to be moving his pawn to there, chase off my knight. I wanted to keep that pawn intact until I can move my f9 and reinforce it. So I want bishop to d3. He continued his attack. Now I probably should have moved my knight back to here, but I was afraid he'd be cut off in the defense of the king. Um, so what I decided to do was I went knight to b1. There's an old saying, it's funny. It's not quite this, but uh, there's an old saying that a knight on f8, you cannot mate, or f1, depending. That's an old. Uh, Grandmaster Larson, he was around in Fisher's time, great player, Danish player. 
and I was thinking that at the time that maybe that knight will come in useful in defense of my king because he's coming. He went a5, and I went rook to e1. I moved the rook back. I realized, of course, that rook to f1 was actually a foolish move. It's embarrassing to admit to your opponent that you made a wrong move, but hey, if you made a wrong move, you've got to correct it the best you can. Now he comes with a pawn, c5. Now, I had thought about taking his c pawn here in passant, and his knight would have taken my pawn on c6, so he would have picked up a tempo, what they call a tempo in chess, which is basically a move. On his recapture, he also develops his piece. I really didn't want to do that. And I thought to myself, with my bishop here, my queen, my knight, and also my pawns, I got plenty of protection around my king, so I wasn't too worried. I went c4. Uh, same theory. If he had taken my c pawn here in passant, I would have taken my knight. And that would have stopped a lot of his attack cold. I uh, would have isolated his a pawn. Uh, my knight would have been nice and wedged there, protecting the e pawn and the d-pawn, and great protection for my king. So I was hoping he was going to take, but he didn't. Okay. I moved knight to g1. You know, at the time, it's funny, I'll go back. I wanted to push the f-pawn. I wanted a pawn storm. I didn't want to put the knight here. I didn't want to put the knight there because he was just going to kick him with the h-pawn. Uh, so I thought to myself, well, you know what, you got a pretty good attack on. Let's... And I went knight to g1. You get a lot of backward knights. Now I've got two of them. He's moved one already here. I moved this knight back and I moved this knight back. The poor knights just can't... They just get pushed around today. And there he goes, knight to e8, so it's kind of comical. Both of us have taken both of our knights and put them on the back rank. Interesting. Maybe he saw me do it and got the idea, who knows, or vice versa. And I went g4. I'm starting my pawn storm. Uh, I want to push my f-pawn next. I've got some very good uh, prospects. My bishop here is bearing down in his position once the f-pawn moves this pawn. My queen is right here. My rook is here, both rooks. My knight, and I've got my bishop and my knight here for defense of my king. So it's it's in pretty good shape. He went knight to c7, and I continue now with f4. Here we go. Let's start. I'm thinking to myself, boy, it's going to be a pretty good attack here. I'm going to go f5, take with e-pawn. And just continue. My bishop's going to be bearing down both of my rooks. I, I felt pretty good at this point. He went knight to d7. He's going to try to bring his knight around to f6 to help defend. And I went right after him. You can't wait. The longer you wait, the more he can defend himself. You don't want to do that. Now, I was a little surprised he went g5. You know, when you move a pawn, you always leave something behind. Um, that pawn... It's going to be tough to defend, and you'll see why in a few minutes. When knight f3, right after him, he went f6. He's trying to close the position, but my h-pawn can open it up at any time. And I went h4 right away. And he went h6. Now he's probably thinking, I'll take his g-pawn, he'll retake, and he'll lock up the position, he can bring his other rook around, and there's not really much going here. So that's what I did. I took, he took. But he didn't see this coming. Sometimes it's hard to see lateral queen moves. He's in trouble right now. For one, I'm threatening mate. My queen here threatens mate, so he has to guard for that. He's trying to figure out what to do here. And also, he's going to lose more than that, because once I bring my rook down, he's going to lose his queen from my rook. And you'll see in a moment. He went king to f7. I checked. That way he cannot escape. I did not want him to escape to this square here. If he did, he could move his king to that square and get out of the attack. That I did not want at all. I wanted him to stay right where I wanted him in the open. Kings are 
very vulnerable in the open. So he had to move his king back. I checked. And now the difference is, when he goes to f7 here, I check with my rook. And I get his queen. Now you're thinking, well, if he moves his king, I'll take his queen, he'll take mine. But the difference is now, he can't, these two squares, the king can, cannot go to. He can't go to any of these squares here, the king. He's forced. He's forced to go here on e8. But when I do take his queen with my rook, it's with check. And that's the difference. So he moves his king. I take check. He takes. I probably should have left my queen on h6 or h5. But I just decided just to pull her back. Just in case there's any nonsense and she gets trapped in there. I didn't want to fool around with it. Bishop to b7. Now you're going to see in the next few minutes I get a little mixed up, so to speak, uh, trying to figure out how to break through. What I was trying to do in my mind is this pawn here and this pawn here I was going to sacrifice one of my knights for, open up the position. Uh, currently I'm up for a queen for a rook. And that way I could blast open the position. So I moved my queen out of the way. I figured I'm going to trade off my lone rook. He went here. I went rook. He went knight to b6. Now I didn't want to take rook takes rook. Because what will happen is he'll retake with his rook. And then he owns that file. Now once you get somebody down, you don't want to give them a chance to come back. You uh, don't want them to live to fight another day. You want to finish him off. So I moved my knight... Now my plan was, I was going to move my knight here, and I was going to move my knight there and block off the position, and I was going to make some uh, noise on the queen side and bring my queen around and uh, do some damage to him. It didn't quite work out, so I had to redo my whole thinking here, and you'll see in a couple of minutes he moves rook here. I went knight to g3, still continuing my plan to move my knight to uh, h5. And I went knight to h5, he went bishop d7. He's just shuffling his pieces around because he, he can't open the position. He'll just be killed. Uh, in fact, I got a knight sitting here on b1 doing nothing, which I'll uh, bring out shortly. I mean, I've got more than enough ammunition. And I bring him out now. He goes a4. He's trying to counterattack. He's trying to get some play. Maybe he'll bring around his d rook. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is all I need. You know, a winning position, and i got to start not playing so passively. So here he comes with a rook on a8, figuring he's going to open up the position. Now I decided to do, move my rook to h3. What I'm going to do is take my queen and put it behind my rook. That way when I move my knight, he has to tick. He can't let my rook get in here and in here and my queen in here. He, he can't allow that. So my queen behind my rook, that's what will happen. He moves knight to e8. Those poor knights stand up on the bank rank so much in this game. And I move my queen to h2, according to my plan. He moved his knight there. Now, I thought to myself, I could have traded off at this point. He would have taken with his king. And retaken rook takes rook, and then he played rook takes rook. And he would have owned the file. So I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to leave that knight there. And I went knight to g3. He has to take... Queen takes. Now I own the file. He cannot put the rook on the h file. So I can move around that queen pretty much at will. He moved his rook there. And I went queen to h6. I'm trying to make him a little uncomfortable. What I'm trying to do is, is take the knight here and capture that pawn. And then when he recaptures with his pawn, my queen takes. I'm going to sacrifice... I'm going to sacrifice this knight here for those two pawns, in essence, what it comes down to. I want to open up his position. And he moved bishop, and I played just as I said. Knight takes g4, f takes, now queen, queen takes. And I took that pawn instead. Now his g pawn is, is isolated. His e pawn is hanging. His c pawn is hanging. His queen is dangerously down in his position. 
I've got an F pawn that can move in. I've got a knight that can come in. He's he's in pretty good trouble here. And I forgot to mention around move 34, around this position here, um, he offered me a draw. And I wasn't really amused. He was a younger kid. He was a nice kid, but I was a little upset. And I said, honestly, I said, you're kidding, right? I said, you should have resigned before now. And he looked at me funny. In other words, like, you know, if I don't ask, uh, there isn't a person in his wildest dreams that would, would agree to a draw at this point. So he moved his knight. He's trying to get his pieces closer to his king. But the fact of the matter is, all his pawns are going to start dropping. His pieces are going to start dropping. I move queen check. He moved king to f8. I played queen takes g5. Now I have two connected pass pawns bearing down on this king position with a knight and a queen. And as we all know, the knight and the queen are very, very well coordinated together. They complement each other beautifully. I moved, He moved this knight up. Why? I really don't know. I think he was going to try to trick me. Uh, as you can see, it's a discovered attack against my queen, and somehow he was going to win that knight. But even still, my queen could have came here and protected the knight. Maybe he was trying to get his knight to come to this square. Uh, I really don't know. But what I did was what they call the in-between move, the intermezzo move. I moved queen to h6, check. Now he has to move the knight back. Now I go to f6. He's going to lose a piece here. At this point, he probably should have resigned. These young kids sometimes, they're, they're taught from an early age. Uh, never give up, you know, because they're playing other kids. You can be stalemated. So they continue on. Uh, King to f7. I took his knight. He took my pawn. Now I'm up a, a queen for a rook at this point, even with the sacrifice of my knight. And I have a G pawn bearing down on him, and a queen, and a knight soon. It's it's curtains for him. And when queen e6 check, I want to keep his king contained. He moved king to f8, only move. And now I bring my knight in. He's hard pressed for a move here. Uh, his rook's being attacked. His king has nowhere to go. He moves his rook there. And I just continue to move my pawn. I've got plenty of time. There's nothing he can really do. He's, he's boxed in here. And he went rook to h7. And so what I did was he tried to do some checkings uh, against my king in the back rank here and just to harass me in general. So I put a stop to that immediately with knight to h6. And I'm also, what I'm doing is I'm trying to bring my queen here and win his rook for free. I'll check him there, he'll move the king, and then I'll take the rook. So he's got to worry about that now. There's just too many threats. Rook to g7. Uh, queen to d6, check. He's forced to put his rook here. He has to block because his king can't go to any of these two squares because of the fact the knight is guarding them. Uh, queen and knight are a very, very powerful combination. He blocked. Now I move knight to f4, 5. What that does is attacks his rook that's pinned against his king. He still can plays on. Bishop to f7. Queen takes. Now I'm a full queen up. I probably should resign at this point, but sometimes the kids don't. He went king to g8. In retrospect, what i probably done, I mean, he gets so far ahead... I said, I probably should have put my knight here and checked and won his bishop for free, but I just went g6. His bishop has nowhere to go. What's he going to do? Knight to f8. I took his bishop check. He moved into the corner. Now, you don't want to put your queen here and think it's checkmate because the knight is guarding that spot. So what I did was I played a g7 mate. Now, this was game three in a five-game tournament. This was the third round of the first day on that Saturday. And I won the first game. I lost the second game to the highest-rated player in the section. So I was really out. I had to win this game. I was out for blood, so to speak. And uh, it was a pretty good game. I kind of lost my way a little bit. Sometimes when you get ahead, you lose your way. It's funny. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the game.
Uh, there's two more games to come. It gets kind of exciting in the end on the fifth game because I'm in the hunt for some prizes. Uh, place first, second, or third. And I'm not going to spoil it, of course. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I want all of you to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. And I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye, folks. Take care.